Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be doing another episode of auction car hunting. The episode series where I go out and I venture to see if there's any interesting auction cars out in these lots. Now today I actually decided to travel all the way down to Portland, Oregon, but I will say that this might be one of the largest auction lots I've been into in a really long time. It is shocking how many cars are here and just to give you guys a little bit of a scope of how large this place is i'm literally sitting in a volvo s60r i don't think i've seen one of these in maybe like 10 or 15 years this was like such a time machine so this is going to be my home office for this morning and i just can't believe some of the stuff that i was seeing this morning so i'm very excited to share this experience with you and just also curious what you guys think about some of these cars that i'm going to be looking at today and i also want to thank you guys for all the support and the comments and stuff on the YouTube YouTube shorts as usual. I think it's really cool that we get to connect beyond just uh, what I do in the YouTube shorts and I can do some more longer form stuff. And a quick little update on the cars that I'm working on with my biohazard Honda Civic hatchback. I have some more video content on the way with that. I just have some stuff that's in review and you guys will understand what I'm talking about once those videos release. So I got a lot of moving parts right now. Um, so just bear with me as I kind of navigate through this because at the end of the day, I'm a one man show. But before we get into the video, I did want to make one quick announcement about my merch. So now I officially have the Tastefully Clap Car Club t-shirts available on my site. Now the whole idea behind this is just to create something that if you guys want to support the channel and become a part of the movement with the Tastefully Clap Car Club, this is a way to do it. Beyond that, I'm just going to give you guys a quick little peek at the size of this lot because dude, this is insane. I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to navigate through all of this today, but when you think about this, this is just one week. So next week, there may be a whole different slew of cars that are gonna be here. I'm gonna try my best to find stuff that I find interesting that I think you guys would appreciate. But at the same time, holy cow, this is way too many cars, dude. This is, this is crazy. And even for the home office, you know that I usually find just whatever is junky or whatever, but this doesn't even seem that junky. This actually looks really nice. Let's just dive right in. So I got a row of these German cars here. We got a BMW M235i, I believe, an Audi S5, and uh, what is that, like a four series BMW over there? But I think what I wanna focus on right now is this Audi S5 because it actually looks really nice. Uh, I don't see any major body damage or anything like that, but the scariest part about these German cars is when they're like this. I would actually prefer that this car had body damage on it because it tells you that maybe there's some mechanical gremlins or something horrible happened with the engine because nobody's just gonna drop this thing off at the auction when it doesn't have any issues like this. Unless it's a very particular situation where maybe uh, it was a repo, somebody couldn't afford the payments because this is a very high-end car. I can even tell that this one, they dumped a lot of money into it. It's got the BBSs with the, with the Contis. What are these, the DW? S06 plus, yep. These tires I know are pretty penny. These are actually what I run on my spec B. Really wonderful tires, but it's gonna cost you. Just like everything on a higher end Audi like this. It looks like it's also lowered. It seems like the, the car is, you know, it's got a nice presence dropped to the ground. Beautiful thing for sure. I see that the windshield is cracked beyond belief. Maybe that's just from uh, heat very possible there but at the same time a little concerning but I think this one actually does have power when I open the door yeah something something got energized and I could see a lot of people looked at this you see all this trail of feet so I'm not the first one that's gonna be looking at this one obviously because it's a this is a very premium vehicle I mean this is this is a very nice car you know I, I know I bash on these German cars sometimes and maybe it's the fact that I have an e36 that just hates me for whatever reason, along with the other ones that I've had too. But in, in the grand scheme of things, these are brilliant. I mean, this is a very nice car when they work, but when they stop working, uh, not so nice. Okay, so let's just see if this thing will fire up. Okay, it fired right up. Hmm, but I, I feel, just, just going with my heart, I, I feel like a little bit of a miss. I don't know how well it's gonna pick up, and I don't know if the car's gonna feel like anything's wrong. And of course it has no gas in it, so <laughs> somebody just drained the gas out of this thing. That's interesting. But 
Doesn't sound half bad. I see a little bit of condensation coming out the back, but it's not smoking or anything. Hmm, this is so strange. Let's see what's underneath the hood. Where is this guy? Okay, so I see that somebody took the cover off on the ECU. A little bit concerning. Somebody, somebody worked on this. You could tell somebody was messing around, especially on this bank of the of the three cylinders on this side. So it looks like a V6 uh, turbo. I'm assuming maybe twin turbo. I'm no uh, Audi enthusiast here. I, I actually don't know too much about these, but this is a nice car. The engine sounds. It sounds okay. It sounds a little clickety clackety for my liking, but maybe that's just how they are naturally. I don't, I don't know. Maybe this was a repo car. It's nice though, man. It's gonna go for a lot for sure, but let's give it a little little brep. Ooh. Ooh, that does sound nice. That does sound nice indeed. I like that. That's sweet. Hmm. Hmm. All right, let's go somewhere else. Now there was no way I wasn't gonna pass by this one and not check it out because you know me and I love my old Hondas. And I appreciate a lot of you guys can appreciate these old Hondas too. So it looks like we got a 91 Honda Accord sedan. But what I found most interesting about this one is that it actually has a manual transmission, which is very rare these days. You don't see too many of these with a manual and especially in the sedan form but I will tell you that I've seen so many of these with three, four, 500,000 miles. And if you take care of these things, they will really take care of you. And there was something about these old Hondas where it's just really hard to kill them. But I can tell already that this one jumped a curb or maybe it hit something because all the suspension moved. So this wheel, it looks like it moved this way. And usually the, the wheel would be sitting like this. And I believe what they call it when a wheel moves like this is the caster. So the caster is actually off and the wheel needs to be recentered. So that just tells you that a lot of these suspension components are possibly bent. And I can see that the upper arm is over here. And you know, everything is here, but I do see that the cotter pin is missing on the top of this upper arm. So it tells you the amount of shock that this endured for the cotter pin to come out. But again, this is an old car and it's not super clean. Uh, the trim on the windshield is coming off, but there's a lot of enthusiasts out there that would go crazy for something like this, you know? Including myself. I'm kind of holding back a little bit on this one because it's not a very clean example, but if you can find one that's a clean example, the availability of parts is a plus, and the fact that these Hondas are relatively easy and, you know, genuinely fun to work on. It's not like uh, some of the other stuff that you'll find here, especially more modern cars. Looks like somebody did this aftermarket spoiler. So at one point in time, somebody did like this car, but it just maybe got to a point where they got sick of it. And it's not a very positive sign either that the whole entire steering column is, uh, you know, in shambles. And that's the unfortunate part with these Hondas. I see it all the time. These cars getting stolen and hacked up, driven hard and then eventually wrecked. And I think that's the whole story behind this one. It's got the driver's mirror missing on this side. I'll hop in here real quick and I didn't even check the mileage on this thing. So let's check it out. It's got, what, is, what does that say? Is that a three? 323,000 miles, see? I told you man, these old Hondas, they just don't quit. The only thing that really kills them is just the amount of theft with these things. But what's more concerning is the clutch pedal is depressed all the way. So it could be that the clutch master cylinder has just had it. It really doesn't know uh, what's going on anymore. Maybe it lost uh, pressure or there's a lack of fluid in there. I haven't popped open the hood yet, so I'm just speculating at this point. But I can see that somebody took uh, either a knife or a sawzall and they literally cut this portion of the steering column at the bottom. So 
that is the number one indicator that somebody went in here and they made a mess of it. But even just this shift knob, this original Honda shift knob, it's like, it looks practically brand new. So let's go through the gears. One, two, three, four, five. And man, it, it doesn't feel half bad, really. And I believe these come with the single overhead cam, 2.2 liter, four cylinder, if I'm not mistaken. Very popular for these things to also get the dual overhead cam VTEC H22 engine swap. And just like I was suspecting, okay? So we have a single overhead cam 2.2. Looks like it's all there. Somebody removed the heat shield on the top, maybe has some sort of exhaust leak on it. Battery's all there, but this is a stock example. Not too bad. I see that uh, some of these bolts look actually pretty fresh on this side so maybe it has some sort of a suspension upgrade or maybe somebody did some service on it recently so that's a pretty positive sign there but this is the master cylinder on the clutch it actually does have fluid so i'm just very curious why that clutch pedal is depressed all the way still pretty cool pretty interesting little thing but let's move on okay here we go subaru wrx hatchback but before we go over to that, I have to look at this one. All right, so if you guys don't know, on this YouTube channel, I have a whole video series on the tastefully clapped Mazda 2 that I would highly recommend checking out. And as soon as I saw this one, it just brought back a lot of fond memories for me. I didn't even need to see the front end. I already know that this is a Mazda 2. It was actually CY's car, used it for all types of racing applications. It went to hell and back rolled over, crashed into a concrete barrier. It was just a mess, but it was so much fun. And these are actually really awesome cars with a manual transmission. So this one is actually really clean. The, the body on it, you, I don't know how you're gonna be able to tell, but in real life I could tell if you wash this, I mean, it's, it's practically flawless besides that front end damage happening over there. Very good looking car. And they're so lightweight and dynamic and very predictable for a front wheel drive hatchback. You don't really hear too much about these anymore. So kind of a shame because I feel like there's a lot of potential here, especially if you wanted to get into some like grassroot racing, they're very easy to work on. It's, it's a relatively simple engine. And even though the, the one that we had eventually got rod knock and slowly met its own demise, you see that once you remove all these plastic coverings in the front and stuff like that, it gives you a lot of access to the engine. So in this case, I see that it doesn't run and drive because there's no D on the windshield. And I also noticed too, that you see this linkage right here? It broke off. So this suspension wise, a lot of stuff happened here. I see the lower control arm too is bent. You see that pinch right there? That tells you that that got bent pretty badly. So you definitely want to replace the lower control arm. You definitely want to replace that. Maybe even the axle too. It looks like it's rubbing up against stuff. So there's a lot of components that you'd need to, to replace, including even the strut. But again, if you just go to the junkyard and you find the original tastefully clapped Mazda 2, I think it's still there at the local pick and pull. You'd be able to get all the stuff that you would need to put this back together. Because all these panels, very cheap. So let's check out the inside. And like I said, man, this one is so clean. I mean, in comparison to the other one, this feels so premium. Look, it's got leather seats. I don't think I've ever seen leather seats in a Mazda 2. Maybe that was like a, a little bit of an upgrade, a factory option, if I do say so myself. Oh man, this is, this is just cool. It brings back memories. Uh, looks like they took something off at the top of the shifter. I have no idea why, but it still feels it feels tight, you know? It just feels really good. I wonder if it'll fire up. Nah, it's probably been sitting here for a while. But man, th this is just cool. I, If I had the capacity to find another one of these and put it back together, this would be a really good contender, really. Maybe I'll have to run this one by CY and see what he thinks about it, because maybe we can do another video series on another Mazda 2. Look, it's even got a sunroof, dude. That, this one's fancy. It's like fully specked out. But okay, let's 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 take a look at this uh, WRX because I'm sure you guys are more interested in that than the little Mazda. So these are very popular cars, especially here and uh, where I'm stationed at. There's a whole bunch of these, but the scary part is a lot of them get thrashed. 
for whatever reason. And this one has the total gangster lean and it's got a mysterious liquid in the back that is very concerning. Uh, I don't know what that is, nor do I really want to know. So I might stay out of this one. Uh, it smells sugary in here. It like smells like somebody spilled a monster energy drink or they are refilling their vape cartridge, which is pretty on brand for a vehicle of this uh, spec. But I see that they were an enthusiast for sure. It's got a little bit of a drop. Is this an STI? I, I'm just starting to notice with the flared wheel arches. No, I think it's a WRX. Huh, okay. That, that's just my mistake then. Um, so this has like the quick release bumper thingies that you can get on Amazon and eBay. Essentially all you do is you just, uh, there's like a bungee that you wrap around here and it just kind of makes it easier for you to take off the front bumper to work on whatever is going on with your car. I don't know, I had a little bit of a, an oopsie there. I see that the clear coat starting to fade on the hood. It's, it's not bad though, really. It must be something mechanical because it's, it's all there. It's, it's not too bad, not too shabby. I thought these had the twin uh, dual exhausts or the quad tips. So maybe this is some sort of aftermarket blast pipe in the back. Yeah, it looks like it, looks like it has a muffler delete. So this thing for sure is rowdy. So that kind of tells you a lot about the uh, previous owner, what kind of nefarious activities they wanted to participate in. And I see it does have the key, so I guess I'll, I'll hop in here. And it looks like it's the limited too, because it's got the heated seats and the sunroof. Actually a pretty rare spec. You don't see too many of these WRXs with this. So I'm gonna put the key in. Oh, this stupid thing. Yes. Yeah. I gotta find somebody to help me out with all this. One, two, three, four, five. It doesn't feel that bad. It's the five speed. Everybody wants the six speed. Because if you can get the six speed STI transmission, man, those are those are some of the toughest transmissions in the world. Um, these are almost kind of like a stigma behind them. I have actually owned the five speed and I currently do with my bug eye and I've never actually had any issues, but I don't drive it like a 16 year old hell bent on trying to take all you guys out with their uh, hooning. So let's pop open the hood. And I believe this is the EJ255. Uh, same engine that was in my Legacy Spec B. It looks very familiar. This is when they made the transition over to the plastic intake manifolds along with the electronic throttle bodies instead of the cable. I actually prefer the cables personally. Perrin strut tower bar. Anything Perrin is a pretty penny. This looks like it has some sort of uh, cob hosing. I don't know if this is actually a cob intake. It might be. Actually, yeah. It looks like a cob in short rim intake. The stock turbo inlet, which is kind of interesting. Usually if you want to do the, the intake, you also want to do the turbo inlet to get all that spoolie boy, whoosh whoosh, choo choo train noises. Uh, stock turbo, stock down pipe? Or is that catted down pipe? I can't tell. Uh, maybe one of you guys in the comments can correct me there. Um, stock intercooler. It looks relatively stock. But the thing is with these Subarus, man, I hate to say it as somebody that loves Subarus, this one probably has some sort of mechanical damage. Somebody driving it too hard and it just unfortunately met its demise. The top of the hood is leaking. So this insulation here just needs, somebody just needs to rip this off. This is actually kind of dangerous. You have it just flapping around and dangling if you're running the engine. Um, yeah, fully functional hood scoop. That's the way to tell if it's a WRX or an STI. But yeah, not too bad. The thing with Portland, is Portland has quite the off-roading scene. That's what I've noticed just from walking around here. So this one, Toyota 4Runner. These are beautiful trucks, beautiful. But man, the price tag to get one of these nowadays, woo wee. Uh, these are like holding their weight in gold. You would think, oh my God, it's destroyed. It's a mess, it's this. No, man, these, this is gonna go for a pretty penny. Especially you ship this overseas Man, people will be paying double, triple what you're asking. Um, you know, I don't need to give away all the secrets, but all-terrain tires, nice upgraded wheels. This was somebody's baby, I can just tell. No safari stripes on this one. This was a mall crawler. Let me see here. And the back end, 
Yeah, it's it's hit here in this corner. I don't know what happened. It's also on the back tailgate. It's just like it's been in a in a washing machine, but I can tell it hasn't been off-roaded. A little wrinkle here in the quarter panel is not too bad. I can just kind of see it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not too bad. This is a good looking truck, but needs a lot of work. Let's check the inside. Wow, look at the inside of the interior on this one. Holy flies, get away from me. Okay, um, so this one with the leather seats, look at how clean. It's so freaking clean. Yeah, this, this was somebody's baby, 1000%. It's got the nice little basket on top. This was not taken off-roading. I can just tell it, it, it just has all the aesthetics though. It has all the upgrades. So somebody really liked this thing. Let me see if it fires up. I'm very curious now. I wonder what the mileage is. And I don't think this one's been sitting for too long. Hmm. Yeah, the battery's dead, but this is nice. Just needs a lot of work. You'd, you'd have to really sit there and assess, but I'm sure this one's gonna go for a pretty penny. All right, check this one out. A Dodge Charger Daytona. A lot of people like these. Hemi V8, very powerful, beautiful color, by the way. It's like this great purplish color, but it got hit and it got smacked real hard. Uh, this is this is probably a takeover car, if I'm being honest with you. This looks like somebody just smacked this corner really hard on something, maybe a light pole or maybe another car. Uh, a light pole would be much more like this, but in this case, I think uh, maybe like an SUV or something just completely took this out. So it's, it's pretty disastrous, man. Uh, it would probably make more sense to just cut all this out, cut off this whole quarter panel, replace it with another charger. If you were going to take it to a body shop, it's very costly and very time consuming, but doesn't mean that it's a complete lost cause. This is going to take for somebody that has a full blown shop with all the equipment you would need. But the good news is I don't feel any of the panel gaps that usually happen with such a big shock like this. But the only thing I see is this panel gap right here in the rear door is a little concerning, but the door does open and close, which is a very positive sign. So lots to see here. I'm sure it's gonna fire right up because it's all in the rear, or at least you would hope. Let's give it a start. Oh. Oh, come on, start for me. Oh, it's so close. Oh, that's okay. We tried. Interior's it's not bad. It's not super clean, but it's not disgusting. Nice upgraded wheels. Yeah, she's a beaut. Man, looks nice. Now, it wouldn't be a Bendega video without me looking at one old Civic. And, you know, it's very difficult to find the Civic hatchbacks, but you can find a lot of the sedans and a lot of the coupes. But what I like about this one is that it's an EX. So the EX model was the highest trim level before the SI from the 96 to 2000 years. So this one comes with uh, power windows, power locks, and the sunroof. And this one, I can't tell if it's been stolen or not, but we're gonna take a peek real quick because 90% of the time these are stolen. But in this case, the key is there and the ignition's all good. Wow, what a miracle. But this one is definitely tastefully clapped, 1000%. I can see how the fender is rubbing up against the door over here. Overspray galore. They sprayed the hood black, but they didn't tape off anything. So it's just got overspray all over it. What a huge mess. It's all over the headlights. It's just like, uh, it was just an afterthought. They just went like this. They're like uh, Van Gogh. Wow, what a beauty. So they ruined that. So maybe if you get some gasoline, some paint thinner, you might be able to remedy that. But this thing is kind of a mess. I see, oh, uh -huh. what's interesting is that uh, we got the lug, the, so here we got the wheel lug stud delete, and it looks like they tried taking this wheel lug off, but they couldn't, so they were trying to mash a larger size socket onto that, which is pretty innovative. These tires are horrendous. Oh my god, these look like they were made back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. So this thing is used and abused. That's the best way I could put it. It's, uh, it's not clean. I could barely open the door handle. That's okay, but it is, it's, it's a manual. But it's 
it's just a mess, dude. 180k on the clock. It's yeah, and it smells like urine in here. It's really gross. I'm getting my head out of that. It smells like somebody soiled themselves. So this one needs to go to the crusher as soon as possible. I I really do appreciate the innovation though. But man, what a what a sad tragic thing. Oh man, a GC. These old Subaru Imprezas will always hold a soft spot in my heart. The first vehicle that I did on this YouTube channel was one of these 97 Subaru Impreza. I loved it to death, but after it got stolen and I held on to it for so many years, I decided to sell it. It was just a, I just couldn't even enjoy it anymore. I, as soon as it got stolen, it was just like, uh, it, it took the fun out of it and I was always so worried about it, but this is this is an OBS. So this is an Outback Sport. You can tell by the, the trim on the bottom. So this one must have, uh, it had something real tragic happen to it because just the amount of the impact buckled this in. So this is a parts car for sure, but it's got the rare double spoiler. This hatch alone is worth a small fortune, really. It's very rare to find these. That's not made out of like the eBay fiberglass. This was a Subaru OEM spec. Very cool. But when you look on the inside, I'm always so scared to open. Oh my, why is there tin foil? Uh, this might be a junkie. Yeah, this, this might be, yeah, this might be a, somebody drug related. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on the inside here. I was just kind of reminiscing a little bit because this is very sad. It looks like they hit a light pole or something, maybe understeered hit that. It's got nice snow tires on it. Maybe this was somebody's daily, but this thing has just had it. What a mess. All right, we got a two for one here. This is interesting. Mazda RX-8, but you know, I see these every once in a while, and these rotary engines, man, they're just, they're just gonna give you problems. Uh, you, you're essentially buying a chassis. You replace a rotary engine, you might be good, but I was more perplexed by this one because I believe this is a Mazda Speed 6. Or at least it says Mazda Speed. I don't know if that's actually true, but I'm pretty sure this is a Mazda Speed just from eyeballing this real quick. I see that it's got the... Uh, upgraded rear diffuser on the back with the exhaust. Uh, the wheels look like they've been upgraded to some God knows what that is, knockoff, whatever. I see the cork sport and the cob. I think this is a Mazda speed, man. I could be wrong. Maybe you guys let me know in the comments. The roof is horrendous. Nobody took care of the paint on this thing. It's, it's in really bad, uh, terrible shape, but yep. I think this is a Mazda speed. It's got the, the factory option bows and it's a manual. Wow, you don't, they didn't make too many of these, you know? Uh, you don't see a lot of them. This one's very interesting. The, the RX-8's in really good shape. I will say that. Very, very good shape for what it is. But this one, we're gonna have to see here real quick. I'll pop open the hood. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Why is that so heavy? Oh my god. Oh, this 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 thing's done for, dude. I I've seen enough. <laughs> it's, this thing's a mess, dude. Oh my god. Okay, the RX8, let's let's give the RX8 a chance. But god, the things I do for you guys, man. This is pretty deep water. I have to navigate through this. Oh, god, it's wet. Oh, it's wet. Okay, so it's it's a manual. I I already know it has engine problems. I already know. I don't even need to. It's nice. It looks nice. So you're buying a chassis. That's all you're doing with this one. You are just buying a chassis. I promise you. Even if you buy this, if somebody goes out there and buys this, maybe you can DM me on Instagram and tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm right. But I'm going to eat my own shoe if this doesn't have a bad engine in it. All right, this seems to be the SUV corner of the lot, and we got a Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sahara Edition. These are the more in modern interpretations of the Sahara Editions from way back in the day. It seems like these Wranglers get bigger and bigger every time I see them. Uh, I'm not a big Jeep guy, but I know a lot of you guys are interested in them, and this one actually doesn't look too bad. I think that it's just a lot of replacing or fixing panels that would put this in a category of something that would be better for just taking on some trails. And maybe that's even what happened here because it looks like it got bit by a shark. So I'm assuming something happened here with the suspension because the wheel is a little bent out of shape, but it's not a deal breaker really. It's just that 
this got totaled out by the insurance because of all the minor imperfections on it. So as a foundation, something like this would actually be really good to bid on if you wanted something that you can just hop in and use and just not care too much about the uh, imperfections in the car. You can't be picky with something like this. I already see that it's got vegetation or tobacco on the inside. Not super clean. It's, it's pretty beat up, but again, if you want to just get the full usage of an of a 4x4 machine, you know, just like somebody did with this poor 4Runner, holy cow, um, this actually wouldn't be too bad of a buy. Uh, looks like it's got that factory hard top, because if you have the soft top on one of these things, or at least from back in the day on the old TJs, it just sounds like you have a, a floppy towel sitting on top of your car when you're on the highway. It's very loud and very annoying. But these have gotten very luxurious. Uh, it's got the parking or the turn signal monitors on the side and stuff like that. So this is not half bad. I, I could dig it. This would something, be something fun to take actually on the Sahara Desert rather than just uh, your local mall parking lot where a lot of these reside. Whoa, what do we have here? Okay, so we got a, uh, what is this? Ford Focus ST, hopefully a manual. These are nice, these are kind of slept on. It's very like pedestrian looking, but it's still an enthusiast spec. Uh, of course, they hit something on the side here, maybe a, a light kissing of a car or a guardrail, who knows, but it's an ST and a manual. Okay, yeah, I, I like this one a lot actually. So, hot hatch, four doors, very practical, but still very fun to drive. Makes you wonder why it's here. Because all that light damage shouldn't be too much. But again, people throw away stuff all the time and I'm always just perplexed and shocked by it. So this one, it's got a six speed manual. The trim on the door is, oof, it's kind of a mess, but it's got the key in it. Not too bad, not too shabby. Okay, let's, see, this is pretty nice. I love these seats, these Recaros. Man, I wish they put these in other cars, just feels so spot on. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. With 62,000 miles on the clock. That's, that's, you're just breaking it in, dude. So I'd be shocked if the engine's bad in this one. Let's give it a, give it a go. Yeah, man. What does it say? Engine's on, yes, it's on, thank you. Uh, okay. Door is ajar. Yes, I understand. <laughs> God, technology is annoying sometimes. Uh, what's wrong with this thing? It seems pretty good, doesn't it? Or am I crazy? This is not bad. Hmm, I do see a little bit of condensation. I'm not sure what that is. Somebody spilled their drink maybe on the side over here? It's not, it's not super clean, but it's... I mean, dude, this is, seems so easy. I'm into it. I like it. Dude, it's nice. There's like a panel gap there in the hood, but let's pop it open. See what this bad boy's about. This hood has not been open in a long time. The engine doesn't sound half bad at all, really. Sounds excellent. This is a good one, really. Excellent, excellent one. Shoot, maybe I need to bid on this one. This is nice, man. This is a really nice car. It's, the engine's still cold, but it has a full tank of gas. I mean, that's a... It's like a hundred dollar value nowadays. The engine sounds very healthy. Oh, nope, not anymore. Now it's sputtering. Okay, why is it sputtering? Uh, um, that's not good. I'm gonna shut it off. Has some sort of misfire. As soon as I revved it, see, that tells you. Something mechanical. 
but maybe it's something neat. I don't know. This this one, I'm torn about this one. I couldn't help but notice this Jeep over here. Holy modifications. This thing looks like it's sprayed with bed liner. So this was like a DIY job. You know, actually, it's funny enough, one of my good friends was asking me if he knows any, if I know anybody that actually knows how to spray on some bed liner. And uh, you know, I have a few connections in the auto industry when it comes to paint work and all of them refuse to do bed liner for whatever reason. Maybe it's the fact that it ruins the equipment they have for spraying it on or the fact that it's so thick and it's kind of hard to layer it on. But if you want to do a DIY job yourself, hey, that's uh, not a bad way to go. I'm sure there's other four by four shops that do it, but the good thing with bed liner is it's very, very durable. So when you take something like this up, off-roading, it makes a lot of sense. But something happened here with the whole front end of this car to the point where they just decided, you know what, it's it's not worth it. And they just took it out. So when I go underneath, I see all the suspension components are just, it's just messed up beyond belief. Not to say that it's completely doomed, but uh, it's got the full size winch. I don't know what they're doing here with the wood. Maybe they're trying to separate it out a little bit. It's got the tastefully clapped zip tie on it. Uh, but these ARB uh, front bumpers, these little, or bash bars, whatever you want to call them, these are worth a pretty penny, but my God, they are so heavy. It just weighs the, the truck down. Huge tires. I mean, look at the size of these things. Are these legit bead lockers? I, I really can't tell nowadays. Maybe one of you guys in the comments can let me know, but this is a beefy boy. Oh, she thick. Got the the wide body fenders. Um, looks like they rounded out almost every single little uh, hex on there. When in doubt, just throttle out. That's uh, one way to live life, especially by uh, that. <laughs> it's cool though. You can tell somebody had their fun with this thing. It's It's a beast. Can't even imagine what the gas mileage is on a thing like this. It says it's a biohazard. And what scares me a little bit is there's flies flying all over this thing on the driver's side. So you know what? I'm gonna, I don't even wanna know. I don't wanna know. I've learned my lesson way too many times. I already bought the biohazard Honda. You guys got to see the full glimpse of that. But when you see flies flying around a car, there, there's something going on. I, I, I don't know what it is, nor do I want to. What? Dude, these gen Toyota Celicas, awesome. I, I don't even know what else to say. These are really awesome. My dad used to have a GTS long time ago in a GT. I remember the GT, it was like, a, I think it was black. I was, I was so little back in the day, but I remember these so fondly. They're great, great cars. This one, obviously, theft recovery, must be at least, because they took a lot of stuff off of these because it's hard to find these in good spec. And look at on the windshield what it says. That tells you everything you need to know. Somebody stole this, which is so, so tragic. The interior looks mint, minty. They made a mess of the ignition. I'm not gonna send this one. I don't need any uh, STDs today. So uh, hit in the back, or yeah, hit in the back. A little bit, it's got panels in it. Somebody, they just used this as a parts car as soon as they stole it. But the craziest part about all this is the panels are so stinking clean. Look at the roof. This was somebody's baby, man. This is very sad. Very, very sad. Pop-up headlights. I mean, look at it. It just looks, looks awesome. So I really appreciated the fact that you guys were so into the D21 hard body that I showed you guys last time. Now this one is interesting because this one was actually donated, but I already can tell that this one is eating away from all this cancerous rust that's starting to happen to it, which is very unfortunate, but it does happen. This is the extended cab, so it has the little nook in the back. I believe these they called these the king cab from back in the day. It's missing the tailgate for whatever reason. The rear bumper, Got hit there in a little bit in the corner, but let's see what we got here. Wow. Yeah, this is like one of the highest trim levels. We've got the premium interior. It looks really nice, but I see that the computer is just sitting right out here. So that's not a very good sign. I doubt this thing's gonna fire up, but for something that was donated here with a hundred and six thousand miles on the clock, it's unbelievable what people throw away because even the shift knob 
is still in good shape. It has the original stereo. This was someone's baby. The seat, I have no idea what's going on with the seat. Maybe somebody was trying to look for something because they just completely unbolted it. So it's just kind of flying around in here. You can see the, the little back seats back there, the little benches from back in the day. I doubt that passes safety regulations to this day, but man, what a thing. What a thing. This thing is very cool. I love the steering wheel with the dash. That's just premium stuff here. Take a look underneath the hood. See what we got. Uh, how do I open this thing? There it is. Is it the V6? Uh-huh, it is. And it's in pieces. Somebody, somebody tampered with this. Somebody tried fixing it for sure. Because they saw what spec and then they just gave up on it. So, might, might probably need an engine. I would guess. What a shame. Good looking thing though, I really like these trucks. Okay, this is a sad one. I believe this is a Hawkeye STI. Yeah, it looks like a Hawkeye. So I, I had to pull up some more information on this one because I believe this has actually been stripped. So this was maybe stolen, left on blocks, and they took all the goodies, which is really tragic. Um, it's, a, it's an issue around here, especially uh, in Portland, just from what I've heard. Uh, these old Subarus get stolen a lot because they hold their weight in gold, especially in STI. So you'd be buying this as just a chassis. Um, the majority of the stuff here is gone. The paint sucks. They took even the spoiler. They, they didn't leave anything really of value. And they even, I don't know why. Oh yeah, they smashed the windows. So smash the windows on this side. It's just, this is just so frustrating, especially if this was your car, because you can tell they wanted to take everything except for the driver's seat, which I have no idea why. It's very dusty and uh, there's not much left to it. It's, uh, it's just kind of a mess in here. I could see some of the vice grips down here on the bottom. Wondering what the, the engine bay looks like. I'm sure they took the engine though. It's uh, quite an ordeal. Okay, pop open the hood. Oh my God, it has the engine. <laughs> what are the chances? Okay, so we have EJ257. This engine looks really nice. I could just tell somebody they dumped a lot of money into it. It's got the Cobb short ram intake with the cover. See all this, this is all Grim Speed. All this Grim Speed parent, all high quality torque solutions, aluminum radiator. This is all high quality parts right here. Wow, I'm just shocked they didn't take the, the drivetrain. That is so bizarre. So maybe you use this as an engine swap candidate. You buy this as a donor. If the engine's good, fires up, sweet. Man, it's even got good body panels on it. I mean, the front bumper looks great. I, this was, yeah, so, somebody must have just been so pissed off when they found their car like this. It's, yeah. And these roof vane spoilers are pretty cool too. I know a lot of people like these, but you have to drill into the top of the roof, so. Just kind of one of those things you send and hopefully it fits correctly. But yeah, Hawkeye STI, man, these are sweet. And look what we have here, the Takeover Special. Dodge Challenger, and I believe this is the RT. So it's not a scat pack, it's not a red eye, it's not a jailbreak, it's just not a demon. There's so many different specs of these. And I think at one point in time, these are gonna be very desirable. But right now I see these all the time and they're always wrecked or always stolen. And I'm gonna see this one. It actually looks to be in one piece. Usually when these get wrecked, it's just beyond anything. And uh, the reason I say takeovers edition is because you see these all the time at your local takeover. Big, powerful muscle car, V8, rear wheel drive. It's just inevitable that this stuff's gonna happen. So I can immediately see that this was involved in a front end collision. So it looks like the headlight is all busted out of shape, but that's the least of your worries because I see something leaking down there. Maybe that's the radiator at this point, but it's got the front bumper reinforcement over here that uh, seems to be pushed up against the radiator. I see that the AC condenser moved and the radiator moved for sure. It might still be holding fluid because I see down here that the water is just leaking out of the headlight because it's actually been raining the past couple days here. Um, this front end, 
I believe, moved. So this post is uh, its not sitting true to where it actually should be. This is all punched in, which is a shame. And uh, I'm sure this whole radiator support, the grill and all that, and it needs to be replaced. You might be able to save this piece of plastic for the, the front fascia. It's pretty scuffed up and beat, but if you were able to, you know, do some body work and respray it, but it really depends on the price if you're able to get that for cheap. But again, it's a challenger. And I believe this one's also a manual. We'll, we'll double check that here in a second. But it's a nice color. I love the yellow on black. It's got that bumblebee finish on it. The rest of the body looks pretty nice. Um, it's not super shiny, but it's not all scratched and dinged up except for this one huge deep scratch that goes all the way on the side over here. So. Not too bad though, really. I see these all the time. They're always just completely destroyed. It's a uh, very patriotic, is that the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's got American flags all over it. But I noticed when I opened the door that it has like this liquid on the center console here. I have no idea what that is. I uh, don't really want to know. I'll still pop in here and I'll fire it up and see how it sounds because it looks like it's got juice in the battery. But I can already see that a lot of people looked at this, so you're going to have a little bit of a bidding war on this one. But you might be able to get it for a good price because if it runs, I think it's worth it. So the interior is not great. Uh, it's all scratched up. Looks like the passenger airbag deployed and unfortunately on these cars, that means you have to replace the entire dash unless you want it to be tastefully clapped. But for a car like this, you want to do it some justice, do it right. You're going to need to replace the airbags, so it's it's a pretty penny to replace these. And uh, to ship them, I don't even think you can. But what's more concerning is the glove box and uh, the fact that there's uh, pills right there. I don't know what that's about. None of my business. I'm just here for the car. Also cracked little display there. Not a biggie. But it is a manual transmission. I do want to refrain from... Uh, touching any of this stuff because it looks pretty gross. Let's fire it up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Low on fuel, of course, because these probably get abysmal gas mileage, but man, it... Thing sounds good. Oh yeah. She's, she sounds real healthy. Sounds real nice. Very, very nice. Let's, let's pop open the hood real quick. I see one of the door hinges is off at the bottom over here. See how that's separated, fill of focus. Not bad though, not bad. I like this one a lot. This is very fixable. Very, very fixable. 5.7 Hemi V8. The fan rubbed up against it a little bit from the accident, but it sounds healthy. It's a little low on coolant. Not a biggie since that's the reservoir. So that means there's still coolant in it. It's just a little low. Yeah, man. This is a nice one. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, I'll give it a little brat, but it's, it's still cold. So I'm not gonna go crazy redlining it or anything like that. Uh, check engine lights on, the uh, tire pressure sensor monitor, it's averaging 16 miles a gallon. That's actually not bad. Spicy little guy. Yep. You're gonna have to get it for a good price, but not too shabby. Mm -hmm. 